Hi, I'm Meg from Tokyo. In this video, I will share with you the top 10 new updates that you should know before traveling to Japan in 2024. I hope you enjoy this video. Okay then, let's go! Number 1. IC Card As many of you already know, Japan has dozens of different types of transportation IC cards such as Suica, Pasmo, and Ikuka. Since even Japanese people can be confusing, I'm sure that tourists might find it even more challenging. Therefore, I will share with you which card to purchase for each case. First of all, let's divide them into two groups, those arriving in Tokyo and those arriving in Osaka. For those arriving in Tokyo, in other words, those entering Japan from Haneda or Narita Airport, the first option is either the Welcome Suica or the Pasmo Passport. These IC cards can be purchased at the airport and are available immediately upon arrival. But I've received many complaints from my viewers that these cards become invalid 28 days after purchase and there's no refund policy for the remaining balance. When you visit Japan again, you have to go through the procedure to purchase another IC card. One such IC card that addresses these advantages is Toika. Toika is an IC card issued by JR Tokai. It's valid for up to 10 years from the date of its last use and also supports balance refunds. The disadvantage is that Toika cards cannot be purchased at Haneda Airport or Narita International Airport in the Tokyo area or at major stations such as Shinjuku and Shibuya. The stations where tickets can be purchased are mainly Tokyo Station, Shinagawa Station, Shin Yokohama Station, Kyoto Station, and Shin Osaka Station. This is not recommended for those who do not plan to head to Tokyo, Shinagawa, or Shin Yokohama stations as part of your first plan. As a second option, iPhone users can issue a digital Suica or Pasmo through Apple Pay. You can use your smartphone to touch and go on buses and trains or even charge your balance. Unused balance can be applied for a refund on the smartphone. For Android users, there's Google Wallet, but unfortunately, issuing digital versions of Suica and Pasmo on your smartphone is not possible. You can also download the mobile Suica and mobile Pasmo apps for both iPhone and Android to issue a new card. But since the apps are only available in Japanese, it might be more difficult for foreign tours to use them. Next up, for those entering Japan from Osaka or in other words from Kansai International Airport, Ikoka is the most recommended option. Ikoka can be obtained immediately at Kansai International Airport. Of course, they are also available at major stations such as Osaka and Kyoto, but it's important to know that they cannot be purchased in Tokyo. Furthermore, even if 28 days have passed since purchase, the card is valid for up to 10 years from the date of the last use, and refunds of the balance are also available. Plus, you need to know that all of the IC cards just mentioned can be used on buses, trains, and other forms of transportation throughout Japan. In other words, if you purchase the Ikoka in Osaka or Kyoto, you can use it in the Tokyo area and other areas. On the other hand, if you purchase the Welcome Suica in Tokyo, you can use it in Osaka and other areas. The card you should choose depends on your situation, so if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Number 2. The value of JR Pass I'm sure you are already aware that the price of the JR Rail Pass, also known as the JR Pass, increased significantly since October 2023. In what cases should you purchase the JR Pass and in what cases should you not purchase one? I would like to provide an actual example to illustrate this point. Let me assume that you have purchased a 14-day regular train ticket. Let's say you visit Tokyo, Kanazawa, Osaka, Kyoto, Kobe, and finally return to Tokyo in 14 days. While the price of the JR Rail Pass for adults is 80,000 yen, if you travel between these stations by Shinkansen or train, it costs less than 40,000 yen, actually less than half. Of course, in addition to these stations, you will likely visit popular places like Shibuya, Shinjuku, and Asakusa in Tokyo. Even if you add 10,000 yen for these stops, the total cost will not exceed 80,000 yen. Moreover, if you use the JR Pass, you cannot take the Nozomi Shinkansen, the fastest of all Shinkansen trains. To be honest, I personally don't see much advantages in purchasing the JR Pass. An exception would be if you're planning to travel from Tokyo to Hokkaido and back, in addition to visiting Kanazawa, Osaka, 
Kyoto and Kobe, as I mentioned earlier, it becomes quite economical, as it will exceed 18,000 yen in most cases. While it's not impossible to visit them all in 14 days, the schedule would be quite tight and is not recommended. That said, Hokkaido is a truly fascinating place and I highly recommend it a visit. Number 3. The Retro Trend At this moment, there is a rising trend of retro clothing or a retro atmosphere among Japanese youth grabbing a lot of attention. The retro trend is all about bringing back the nostalgic styles from the 1980s and 1990s and is catching on with folks in their 20s like me or even younger. I don't know the streets of those days so I feel as if I'm going back in time. Perhaps it reflects a feeling of stagnation in Japan where the future is uncertain. One easy way to get this trend is through tourist spots. Retro yet Instagram-worthy yokochos and cafes are popping up one after another in Shinjuku, Shibuya, Asakusa, and other areas. Yokocho is usually defined as a place where izakayas and bars are gathered together bustling with a friendly atmosphere until late at night. For example, you could find Ryuno Miyako Food Street and Hobo Shinjuku no Rengai in Shinjuku, Shibuya Yokocho in Shibuya, and Shokuto Matsuri no Dendo in Asakusa. These yokocho boast great popularity among young people and are crowded places to enjoy eating and drinking. Also, there's Taisho Romang in Asakusa where you can find costumes and enjoy melon soda which was popular in the past. The restaurant is designed in such a way that you attempt to post your phones on SNS which is expected to have a positive effect on publicity. The retro trend is not only influencing the places but also the fashion of young people. High school girls are once again wearing the loose socks that were popular more than 30 years ago. The trend is called emoi in Japanese and its old-fashioned term is once again in the limelight. Actually, the word emoi comes from the English word emotional which in Japan refers to places and things that move the heart. In 2024, it may be a good idea to experience emoi in Japan. Number 4. New Team Lab Release in November 2023, Azabudai Hills, the tallest building in Japan, finally opened. Standing at 330 meters high, it surpassed Abe no Harukas in Osaka as the tallest building in the country. Azabudai Hills offers a variety of restaurants and shopping options and I had the chance to visit just the other day. The new team lab is set to open in February 2024 on the basement floor of Azabudai Hills. While there is already a team lab location in Shintoyosu, have you had the opportunity to visit? It offers a unique entertainment experience where you can immerse yourself in a giant work of art with your entire body, all while being shoeless. A recent video showcasing team lab's work at Azabudai Hills has been released and we are eagerly anticipating the unveiling of the artwork in this new space. Unfortunately, the reservation process has not been disclosed yet but I will share the information right after it is released, so stay tuned for the updates. Number 5. 24 hour operation. Convenience stores and family restaurants open 24 hours a day are very convenient in Japan. They are indispensable for busy businessmen who work late into the night. Family restaurants are used by young businessmen who work late into the night, miss the last train, and complain about their bosses and work. But recent developments raise the question of whether this practice will continue or change in the future. For example, the Skylark Group, Japan's largest chain restaurant operator, had completely eliminated its traditional 24-hour operation at all of its restaurants by 2020. Another example is McDonald's on Shibuya Center Street, which has also discontinued 24-hour operations. In addition to a decrease in the number of people going out at night due to changes in work styles and the decrease in demand for late night business due to the rise of internet cafes and also it's becoming more difficult to secure staff due to the shortage of labor caused by the decrease in the number of young people in the population. Due to the company shortage in the workforce, more and more stores are suspending 24-hour operations. On the other hand, most convenience stores such as 7-Eleven and Lawson continue to operate 24 hours a day. This is partly due to recent reforms in work styles and the ongoing labor shortage. In the future, it may soon be the case that convenience stores which are readily accessible at any time will no longer be open 24 hours a day. Number 6. Deep Experience of course, you can travel to tourist attractions, but the new way to enjoy 2024 is to interact with local Japanese people. 
If you go to a normal bar, you might be able to mingle with people from various countries, but don't you think you should try to have a more unique and deeper experience in Japan? I'd like to recommend karaoke and snack bars. First up, karaoke. Karaoke is a very popular form of entertainment in Japan where you enjoy singing songs by yourself. In a dedicated karaoke box or a karaoke room, you can enjoy a variety of songs using a screen with displayed lyrics and a microphone. Visiting with your friends and family, food and beverage service is usually available at most karaoke places so you could have a good time along with singing. Additionally, the unique Japanese way of enjoying snack bars is also popular. You can enjoy small talk and singing while having drinks in a relaxed small drinking establishment. We usually call the owner Mama at snack bars and you could have an opportunity to communicate with her. The unique interior design and atmosphere make it an intimidate place and a favorite among the locals. If you're not going to karaoke or snack bars just by yourself, why don't you come with me? I've just started offering private tours, so if you're interested, please contact me through the description below. Number 7. Safety Shinjuku Kabukicho or Roppongi in Tokyo is a well-known area for Japanese nightlife. Both of these areas are really dangerous when walking around normally, but there are a few precautions you should take at night, however. Shinjuku and Roppongi have many upscale clubs and bars, and there are people who target foreign tourists to catch them on the street. If you have already watched my previous video, you can imagine what happens next. To give you an example, you could find a place saying all you can drink for 2,000 yen. But when you actually get inside, there are stores that charge exorbitant fees such as several tens of thousands of yen for ice and 20,000 yen for drinks and snacks. Basically, if you go with them, you cannot escape. The bouncer of the restaurant will come to you and will not let you leave until you pay. In the worst case, you may be dragged and dazed and asked to pay a large amount of money by credit card without permission while you are in a coma. While it is unlikely that problems will occur in Shinjuku or Roppongi, if you're just walking around, you should be careful in some of the bars and clubs. As a countermeasure, I recommend that you do your research beforehand and enter a reliable establishment or go into a place with a local like me. And the most important thing is to never follow a thought no matter how many times you are asked on the street. Number 8. Japan Currency Week and Hotel Recently, the Japanese yen has been weakening resulting in favorable exchange rates with foreign currencies and this has led to an increase in foreign tourists. While the weekend is making it harder for us Japanese to travel abroad, for those who live abroad now is the time to take advantage of this opportunity. And while there have been few luxury hotels in Japan, the weekend and inbound demand have prompted many foreign affiliated luxury hotels to enter the Japanese market one after another. For example, there is a hotel called Janu Tokyo in Azabudai Hills in 2023 and Burugari Hotel in Tokyo Midtown at Tokyo Station. Hotel group Shinjuku is opening in Shinjuku Kabukicho Tower. The same phenomenon is happening in Osaka and Kyoto. According to a report by the Japan News, a major Japanese media outlet, Southeast Asian hotels in particular are on the rise in Osaka and Kyoto. This is a great time to save, so please come to Japan for your next vacation. Number 9. Increase in Anime Cafe As you might already know, Japan is famous for its anime. Cafes collaborating with popular anime are very popular in Japan today. For example, there is a cafe regularly collaborates with Daimon Thayer in Shinjuku, Tokyo, another with a detective Conan theme in Ikebukuro, Tokyo, and the permanent Pokemon Cafe in Nihonbashi, Tokyo. The interior of each cafe is decorated with character posters, figurines, and artwork allowing customers to enjoy their meals while being enveloped in an anime atmosphere. Basically, the anime cafe menu has a wide variety of dishes and drinks themed around those anime. You could even get original goods only available there. It's common to enjoy cute desserts that incorporate character motifs and original drinks that differ from series to series. Anime cafes may also offer limited time collaborations to coincide with the release of a new film such as The Demon Slayer or The Detective Conan, so please check out the anime cafe's website for more information. Number 10. Over Tourism The renewed increase in the number of foreign visitors to Japan since COVID-19 is very welcome. 
But some of the poor manners and excessive crowding have also become problems, making the lives of local residents uneasy. According to a report by NHK, Japan's public broadcasting organization, many tourists are visiting a boathouse known as Ine no Funaya in Kyoto. But unfortunately, some brochures state that Ine no Funaya is not a tourist attraction. Other examples include the unauthorized entry into farmland to take pictures of the blue pond in BHO, Hokkaido, a place I visited this year. Also, some tourists are causing issues by rushing to a railroad crossing considered sacred in the popular anime Slam Dunk. This creates problems when people overflow onto the roadway and obstruct traffic in the area. As a measure to deal with over-tourism, for example, Kyoto has abolished the one-day bus pass for tourists, as I mentioned in my previous video. Furthermore, Kyoto is trying to spread out the places and times people gather. Specifically, they're sending out information to encourage tourists to visit other than popular tourist spots or even trying to shift their tourism to early mornings and evenings. But they still seem to have a hard time dealing with over-tourism. It's really sad for me as a provider of tourist information in Japan that not only residents but also visitors to Japan like you guys will return home with a bad feeling because of over-tourism. For you guys, I've already covered some hidden spots in Tokyo and Kyoto in my previous videos. If you're interested, please check them out. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like button. Please share your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. See you at the next video!